Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Ranks Every Boss and Kana Bridge of Spirits from Easiest to Hardest. These bosses will be ranked on Expert Spirit Guide Mode, aka Hard, which is the hardest difficulty you can pick until you beat the game, at which point you unlock an even stupider difficulty to bash your head even deeper against the wall. But since none of my strategies involve tanking damage, it'll be basically the same experience to talk about. Although on the hardest difficulty, you're punished even more for getting hit, even taking away your healing capabilities by leeching your courage meter, so just don't get hit. Simple. Boss ranking over. Starting from easiest and working our way to hardest. Number 16, Sprout. Go ahead, raise your hand. Who here died to Sprout at least once? Game journalists, I see you in the crowd. And if you died to this boss and you're not one, I think you're squandering your chance at a real career here. Sprout exists to teach you how to shield and parry. He does one swing, and if it doesn't kill you, he just stands there like he can't believe it. Parrying is pretty responsive in this game, although the window is questionable at times, but Sprout is Sprout whether you're parrying or just mashing R1 like you do for most of the game. Number 15, Kappa. They make you fight this boss before you get the bow, which is a dick move because he's squirrely despite being a turtle demon. Wherever he pops up, just attack a few times, dodge the enemy making bomb, and repeat the process until you have enough courage to absolutely demolish him with the R2 square spirit hammer thing. Wouldn't it be neat if your whole ability meter didn't disappear as soon as any fight starts? I'd love that, personally. It would make me feel like there was any reason to conserve resources and earn extra slots at all. My rot level goes up and I'm like, hell yeah, another empty container. It's like if you had a full water bottle in your hand and then you got thirsty, so you dumped the whole thing out and then went to collect more before you could drink. Ass backwards mechanic. Number 14, Shrine and Stone Guardian. These two are basically the same, except one of them makes you throw a bomb at him to unveil his shootable weak points that somehow aren't weak to bomb explosions. You should pretty much stay at a distance the entire time until all the crystal boogers have been shattered, then just roll in and out with a couple hits every so often while tagging the endless enemy spawns. For both Guardians, when they slam the ground in an earthy shockwave and their bulb starts glowing, send the rod over there to light it up and then do your little key pulse to mega stagger the Guardian for hella damage. R2 Square is your best friend in virtually every boss encounter too if you can spare the energy. The fact that there's very little healing opportunity in boss fights means you better be maximizing your offense whenever you can. Number 12, Wood Knight. I don't like that it looks like we're fighting this boss at the crack of dawn. Morning Wood Knight makes me uncomfortable, especially as dangerous and girthy thrust attacks. I hate when bosses are preceded by enemy encounters because when you die, you have to do them over again. It's like, dude, how many monkeys do I have to shoot out of trees before you just let me go straight to the boss next time? The Wood Knight requires some patience to your dodging because his attacks are more delayed than Dying Light 2. He just sits there in his attack animation for what feels like hours and then beats you with his meat when your timing is off. As with all bosses who have crystal boogers, shoot them. They don't break from melee attacks, and I think that's unfair. You're telling me his wood is harder than mine? Unlikely, I've been on Genshin subreddits all day. Number 11, Vine Knight. This boss is vulnerable to two things, circle strafing and the charged hammer strike. It punctures right through his shield. You want to be near him most of the time because he's got a lengthy vine whip that would make Ivy Sword jealous. I thought I'd struggle a lot more on this fight after I died the first time, but he just got demolished by my rot abilities while trying to turtle himself in his shield like a coward. Number 10, Rot Eater. I like to feed the rot to him, personally. I hate controlling the dragon thing. I never used him for combat. The Rot Eater has an entire army of lizards and moths at his disposal, and I do mean disposal after you throw 40 of them in the dumpster with your attacks, only for him to take them all to the Pokemon Center and replenish their numbers. Don't you hate how the moths are programmed to juke you as soon as you aim downside at them? Way to prolong your death by one second. Though you did succeed in pissing me off. Just deal with all the minions, use the built-up energy on some offensive abilities, and then do it again till the Rot Eater becomes the Dirt Napper. Number 9, Mage. I'd like to meet the person who designed this enemy and shake his baby. Who decided it was okay for a boss, and later a regular enemy there can be multiple of, to have a move that heals half his HP and doesn't get interrupted by normal attacks? It's not cool, bro. For some reason, I never thought to shoot an arrow at his slow-moving fireball, and trying to dick around it like a linebacker produced mixed results. Regardless, this absolute mf -er is slippery, loves to dodge attacks, and heals more than infrequently. I'd save my R2 hammer for times when he tries to heal so you can interrupt it. Always make sure you have a charge at the ready. Number 8, Warrior. For such a late game boss, the warrior is pretty basic. I beat him first try while pretty much everyone else left on the list took at least a few. You can attack him while he's blocking on purpose to bait his kicking counterattack, after which you get a ton of time to be a warrior yourself. 
The bosses in this game are cool for the most part. I just wish they were in a game that had better melee combat. I can only do one four-hit combo so many times before I feel like the boss pities my character for her lack of training. Number seven, Corrupt Taro. Enemies that have grab attacks can F off. Enemies that have grab attacks that take 80% of your HP can F off again after the initial F. The saving grace of this fight is that Corrupt Taro has a dangling little throat testicle that provides a consistent means of stunning if you shoot a fat arrow at it. Otherwise, you have to watch out for instant distance closing lunges and never get caught off guard. Although, don't be afraid to take your eyes off bosses if you need to find health. Either sit and shield as you scan the battlefield or just spam rolls. Remember that there's a built-in second chance mechanic that prevents you from dying in one hit until you're on the absolute brink of death. And it's a good thing it's here or else that grab would have pissed me off a lot more. Number six, Sprout Captain. Given how early in the game this is, I think a boss that's fast, combo heavy, and is constantly closing the distance on you goes pretty high on the list. He has a crystal on his back, which is a good place for it considering he's never not facing you, so I never found a way to smash it. You really just have to parry. If you don't parry a lot, you're gonna have zero fun, and I'm definitely a dodger more than a parrier, so I was not enjoying myself. My suggestion, use this boss to learn how to parry. Try to parry everything. Don't dodge, don't hold shield. If you die, you die, but you can jump back in the fight almost immediately after you respawn, so practice this dude till you can parry him in your sleep. That'll make some later fights easier too. Number five, Mask Maker. I don't know why this dude's attacking us. His business has been taken off lately. He's thriving. The Mask Maker spends a lot of energy teleporting around, but low key, he doesn't actually unleash that many attacks. Whenever he starts appearing in a small black cloud of smoke and his sword isn't already in his hand, just go hit him a couple times. Since you spend a decent amount of time rotating the camera as fast as possible to actually locate the guy, now's a good time to advise you to set your right stick sensitivity to maximum, which still isn't enough, but it's better than the molasses speed it defaults to on PlayStation. This game's camera takes even longer to spin around than a horror movie actor's head does when they sense an intruder standing behind them. On some level, I get the sluggishness, because it seems like they never get stabbed until they've actually turned all the way around to look at the guy, so it does prolong their life a bit. But in this case, slow turning is a good way to end your life even quicker. Number four, Hunter. I think this is my least favorite boss besides the final one. Also, cool name, by the way. What are you, my neighbor? It's time for you to fight Hunter. Oh boy, I hope he doesn't run me over with his tricycle. Think I just watched him put a worm in his pocket. This fight is 100% bow combat, essentially. Most of the time you knock the dude down with your charged headshot, he's 20 miles away. And unlike Hercules, you in fact cannot go the distance. So just keep planting arrows in his skull until he gets up and then do it all again. Use the trees for cover when he's shooting at you and watch out for his melee approaches. If you trip one of the wire traps, you can shield dash out of the resulting crimson dome, but you'll still probably feel like a dumbass. Number three, Corrupt the Woodsmith. This rogue lesbian puts up quite a fight with her strap-on hammer. The first phase is all about sticking a bomb to the core in the center of the room, blowing it up, and then letting off three quick arrows to unleash a blast of energy that stuns the woodsmith, so you can run up and do no damage to her with your wimpy stupid attacks. During the second phase, this stun window disappears, and you just have to plant about a hundred arrows in her deciduous skull while you jump over shockwaves and dodge the occasional melee swing. Make sure your head's on a swivel, cause sometimes she tries to sneak a shockwave off from behind you, and that can really ruin somebody's ankles. Number two, Corrupt Toshi. Wanna beat this boss without parrying? Good luck! There are two main attacks that you should really learn the timing on. His opening lunge gambit, where he puts his sword behind him and his staff above him, and another lunge where he just kind of raises both hands like he's about to start stripping. Parrying these completely cancels the combos he's trying to go into, and will net you a few hits, but don't overextend because he'll just go into another thing right after. If he flies up in the air, you want to shoot him in the head right when his magical burst thing is about to fire. That'll send him screaming back down to earth. But yeah, parry. A lot. This fight took me seven or eight tries, and I was ready to rank it as the hardest in the game because I thought it was the final boss. But then the real final boss showed up and decided to be an absolute turd. Number one, Corrupt Rot God. The hardest boss in Kana Bridge of Spirits is the Corrupt Rot God and all the bullshit that comes with it. Initially, it's no problem. You just dodge a couple highly telegraphed attacks while firing arrows at all the purple jizz he's collected on his joints over the years. Although I will say that grab attack is straight nonsense. The windup looks exactly like another 
slower attack, but then slap sound, you're caught, and I don't think you can dodge through it with iframes, because I tried a couple times and got snatched up like a toddler at a playground anyway. But so you bust open a few boils and you're like, hell yeah, giant bosses are always easy. But then you realize they're trying to make it a whole experience, so this boss isn't just a boss. It's a boss with a bunch of lesser enemy gauntlets and a fucking platforming section for some god-awful reason. All interspersed between phases of the real fight, which gets progressively more bullshit as it goes on. For story reasons, you don't have the rot to help you in the beginning, and part of the journey of the boss fight is reclaiming them in batches as you go, which makes for a nice little treat at the end of every enemy gauntlet, but it's also a giant middle finger because every time you get some, it fully recharges your courage meter and you're like, oh thank god, I need to heal when the next phase starts. But then because of how this game works, as soon as you enter the next phase, all your courage gets depleted because it always gets depleted, and I just cannot stress enough how absolutely stupid that mechanic is. How many fucking battles do we have to win before the rot gain a little goddamn confidence in us? So reclaiming the rot doesn't even feel good because you're earning something that immediately gets taken away, and I honestly don't even think they're cute anymore. Put on whatever hats you want, you're flaky and unreliable. I had to look up the final phase of the fight because I don't think it's obvious that you need to circle around the boss and look up at its back for the giant spears embedded in there to prompt you to send the rot to interact with them. All while dodging random falling shockwave debris from every direction that will RNG you down to your last gasp of breath. This boss is too long, and dying anywhere makes you start the whole thing over, unless you fall in the platforming section. That one gets a checkpoint, but it only stays active for as long as you're in that section. Corrupt Rock God is some BS. Well, that's gonna do it for this boss ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you should like it. Follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino and on twitch.tv slash sunburnedalbino. Subscribe, be a pal, and I'll see you guys next time.